what's the scoop? You're telling me on the top of this ridge line up here, there may or may not be a lookout cabin that you may or may not have heard of going to before, possibly? <laughs> So there's definitely a lookout cabin, but I'm not sure if it's unlocked or if we can even stay there. I've heard rumors that you can, and rumors are enough, right? We'll find out when we get there. <laughs> yeah, and uh, if you have to go till midnight with your headlamps on, why not? Isaac! How's <laughs> that van life up there in cold Canada? Oh yeah, the van is, uh, the van's cozy as a cabin. But uh, the, I'm actually calling because uh, I got a flight notification this morning for cheap flights to Kalispell. Wait. Should I, should I send it? Pull the trigger, bro. Hey friend. Uh, Welcome to the first real suffer fest of 2020. Uh, in this video, I want to have a conversation about how to tell better stories in 2020. And not only how to tell better stories, but why I think it's probably the most important thing you could focus on this year. So the objective for today is to skin up uh, to this lookout, which from where I am right now, is another 2,000 feet of vertical gain across about two miles. Plans are still to be decided of what we're gonna do in the next couple hours here. We'll throw in headlamps and keep slogging, but uh, we've got a long ways to go. In this video, I did want to address what I think are some really helpful storytelling principles to start practicing and putting into your work. Because truthfully, I think becoming better storytellers is one of the most important skill sets that we can be working on because if we aren't trying to tell better stories, then what's the point of what we're doing anyways? And I just realized we're going into 2020, which for me means I've been becoming a filmmaker, working at filmmaking for a decade now. And when I look at that first five years of that decade, there's a lot of just figuring out how to make a video, how to work a camera, how to record stuff that looks half decent. But in the second five years, that's when I really started to deliberately practice different skill sets that would improve the actual storytelling in my videos. And that process of deliberately practicing certain aspects of storytelling has made a huge impact in my work. And it's taken me from a place where, truthfully, I didn't like the videos that I was making at all and now i'm at a place where there's some projects that i put out that i'm really proud of and one of the big goals this year is to make sure that i'm actually getting the material that i teach at workshops into videos that i'm putting out on youtube because it's honestly the thing that i'm most passionate about Yeah, look at that. My keys are heavy with snow. So now the funny thing here is we could head all the way up there and the door could be locked. <sighs> Probably will be. <laughs> if not, we know how to build a Quincy. So uh, we could snow cave it, just bivy it, tree well it. There's options. Snowboard back down. It's only one 3,000 foot run, right? <laughs> Levi. Isaac. How you feeling? <laughs> uh, I think the word that's coming to mind is humbled. <laughs> Completely humbled, man. I don't know. I, I I might not have been eating enough food, or maybe I don't. I don't know. I just conked right out. Isaac's been really patient with me. <laughs> Thanks, Isaac. Hey, you're welcome. And it's not been hard to be patient. I'm going slow myself. It's super hard. Yes. Oh my God. <laughs> 
There it is. Yes, dude. Dude, this is amazing. Okay. Okay. Is it screwed shut? Here we go. Here we go. Oh my god. It's locked. No, I'm just kidding. I think it's just a couple of things like this. Oh, buddy. <laughs> it's not locked. Dude, there's beds. Yes. There's beds. What? Yeah. <laughs> Grimace lights. <laughs> Firewood. Oh. You made it, dude. Dude, there's a bed. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> I think it's time to, I think it's time to get a light out, light a fire, have some dinner. Have some dinner. We deserve this one. <laughs> that was the longest five mile hike of my life. <laughs> <laughs> Waking up at this lookout after an incredible night's sleep is an experience that I'm not gonna forget anytime soon. In the rest of this video, I wanna talk more about story principles and things you can start applying right away. But first I wanted to tell you about where I ordered most of the winter equipment that helped to make this experience possible. And that is from the sponsor of this video, backcountry.com. Earlier this winter, I ordered my brand new splitboarding setup from them. One of the things that I noticed basically immediately when trying to split board is that usually I wear mittens because my hands get cold very easily. But when you're transferring over from the touring mode to the snowboarding mode, you need dexterity in your fingers to be able to do that transition. And so often I was taking off the mittens so that way I could transfer over the snowboard and then my hands would get cold immediately. So I hit up one of the gearheads at Backcountry asking what they would recommend, letting them know that my hands get cold fast and I needed some dexterity. They steered me towards what are called three finger mittens and I ended up snagging this pair from Hestra. And I'm not kidding when I say these are the best gloves I have ever owned. So that's a big advantage with backcountry.com. If you're facing a problem with your outdoor experience and you're trying to find a solution, you can head over there and they've got a massive selection of various different products from all of the top brands. Before this trip, I ordered some new Avalanche rescue gear because before I had normally been renting. For the shovel, I selected the Transfer 3, and the extendable handle makes it a beast for moving snow. It's hard to beat the value of this shovel for the price. And for a beacon, I went with the Tracker 3, which is a great upgrade from the Tracker 2, which is what I was used to using previously. While doing practice rescue scenarios in my avalanche training over this winter, I learned that multiple signal searches can get complicated really fast. And the Tracker 3 has some new features for helping manage the searching of multiple signals, and yet it keeps the usability simple and straightforward. So I encourage you to get outside this winter. And if it's gear that's stopping you, make sure you head over to backcountry.com and use my code for 15% off your first purchase with free two-day shipping for orders over $50, a great return policy, and gear heads available 24 seven to help answer any questions that you might have about anything. So thanks backcountry.com for sponsoring this video. When we're trying to figure out how do we tell better stories, I think we forget to actually press into our own experiences of what makes a good story. Because when we watch other videos or when we hear people tell stories, we've got that innate sense walking away of if that was a good one or if that was a bad one. And most people can be a good judge of that. And that can be deceiving because you think just because you know a story was good or not, that means that when you go to tell one, it should be simple, right? But what I found over the years is a lot of the struggle is having the work that you're making actually line up with what you already know is a good story. 
Because I think most of us that get into filmmaking these days really love the technical stuff and we can end up spending so much time on trying to get beautiful shots and depth of field and nice aerials. And so let's say we spend 80% of our time on that. But what if we just took 20% and actually tried to tell a better story? So what if we actually, the amount of effort that we're putting into getting beautiful shots, what if we actually took that and tried to ask ourselves, what, what am I actually trying to say with this video? How can I communicate it back to an audience so that way they can connect with it? That foundation right there, trying to practice that over and over again and closing the gap between the stories that you see in your head and what you're actually able to physically produce, actively just putting in those reps and trying over and over again, you can't beat practicing. So a really practical tip I have here on storytelling is have a mountain to climb. And I obviously don't mean just only mountains in your videos, but I mean have a point behind the video that you're making because truthfully the viewer at home doesn't like watching a video if they don't know what it is. So what is the point? Do you know what the point is? If you have no clue what the point of the video you're making is, there's a real good chance the viewer doesn't and they're probably not gonna be interested or engaged. So figure out what could be the central thing that you're trying to accomplish in your video. And obviously for us last night, we had the very practical mountain of climbing up here. And, and even within that, the tension of, is the cabin gonna be locked up here? Neither Isaac or I have ever been here. So there's some unknowns and those unknowns keep creating a sense of what's gonna happen next. And I just can't stress how important that factor of what's gonna happen next keeps a story engaging. Dude, what a night. So much fun. This is great. It might look uh, pretty mellow on camera, but uh, it feels uh, feels a lot more fun when you earned it. This is so rad. I'm having, a, I'm having an incredible time. Back here now at Isaac's place. What an incredible past few days, week here in Montana. I'm really pumped. And I wanna share with you some more storytelling thoughts and ideas. And this one kind of comes to, what do you do when you don't know where to start? Like, what if you aren't sure what types of stories you want to begin telling? And for me, something that's always been a positive thing to try to chase down and see where it leads is curiosity. So what are those things that you'll just research for hours on end because it just captures your attention? Because the truth is, if there's something that captures your attention, there probably is someone else out there that is just as interested or curious about it as you. 
And I've found most of the stories that I've told that I'm really proud of, like uh, my documentary Untethered, which you can see on my YouTube channel, or the Slack Life series, or projects kind of up that vein, came out of me just following my personal curiosity and then trying to share what I was learning back with someone like you at home. And that process of scratching your own itch and trying to satisfy your own curiosity, that ends up being very similar to the structure of a lot of stories is you kind of are introduced to this new idea and it kind of flips your world upside down and then you try to chase down, you know, what does this mean and can I actually figure this out? Isaac. What's up? Dude, what a day. So good. Does this uh, backyard view ever get old? I mean, it's a little bit dingy looking right now, but that's just because I've seen it in its best clothing. Do you have a, a go-to storytelling tip you can share with the friends at home? Sure, yeah. So what is it? What helped me get started was to think of story as a beginning, a middle, and an end. Is it that easy? I mean, no, it's not that easy. I mean, it's gonna take years to master, but like, uh, like anything, you gotta start somewhere. Simple, easy concepts to grasp. So the beginning, middle, and end. It's the journey. And I feel like what I see is a lot of people do a beginning and a middle, and they always forget the end. Resolve your stories. Um, makes them a little more interesting, keeps the curiosity going. That's one area I wanna work at uh, this year is getting better at showing the change. Yeah, I mean, I have a lot to grow in that area as well, but I think that framework has kind of helped me understand a little bit more about what is missing when I look back at my videos and look forward to changing that when I go to the next video. Should I uh, come back to Montana soon? <laughs> yeah, dude. This was a uh, pretty epic uh, last several days. <laughs> so Isaac made a video from this whole experience as well. I highly recommend uh, you heading over and checking that out. And uh, it's just fun getting out and making things. Like being in a new place is a great way to get your creativity kind of flowing and being in a new context where there's unknowns because you can get comfortable in your home context. So again, if you're feeling like your storytelling is getting a little bland, switch it up and see what ideas come from it. Hi. Hi. Back here in the van, cooking up some spaghetti dinner. It's uh, smelling delicious. I'm very hungry. But more important than dinner, we've got Janelle. Hi. How was, uh, how was your nap this afternoon? That was good, I needed it. Uh, she woke up nice and early this morning to come pick me up from the airport. I must say it was really lovely getting picked up in our home at the <laughs> airport by my lovely wife. Okay, so I wanna leave you with one closing thought here and there certainly could be many more and I will make more storytelling videos. So in fact, let me know in the comments if you actually enjoyed this type of video and maybe it would even be helpful if you let me know what your questions are so I can figure out what angles to take on the topic of storytelling. But I think, at least for me, as a storyteller, something that I get excited about is telling other people's stories. And uh, I want them to be real honest and kind of grungy, personal stories. And so I'm expecting when I show up with my camera to be able to earn the trust of people and to get them to open up. And I think it's worthwhile for me and for you, if you wanna do stuff like this as well, to wrestle with what that actually means, uh, expecting and trying to get that kind of honesty out of other people. Because if we as the storytellers are not being honest ourselves with our own stories, with our own life experiences. If we're not, if we're not willing to open up in that way ourselves, it's kind of hypocritical to be asking that from the people that we're putting on camera. And, and that's one of the reasons why I started making more videos about the story of my own life on YouTube is I wanted to be living a better story. And I actually made a whole video on this topic that you can check out, I'll link it down below. But that process of actually trying to self-edit what you're seeing your week as, your daily life as, that is a is a pretty powerful thing to be face to face with. So I hope you found some inspiring ideas uh, in this video. I had a lot of fun making it and I'll catch you in the next one. Until then, remember, life's better when you make stuff. Peace. <laughs>